I am here with my friend, Vanessa Hung, and she's amazing. She knows all the things. And whenever I'm stuck in an Amazon bind, I just call Vanessa and she always has the answer. So as we know, lately on Amazon, there has been some binds. We've been stuck in some binds, Vanessa. <laughs> yep. Help us. You know, we had this um, last week. I posted about how my friend messaged me. My friend Alfonso messaged me and he's like, Amy, Amazon changed my titles. The AI changed my titles and I can't change them back. And 10 of my 110 ASINs are affected. And every day a new one is affected according to my Helium 10 alerts. And I've tried everything. I've tried seller support. I can't fix it. And this whole thing started blowing up. Everybody else's uh, listings started getting changed. And it seems like they're just like a slow rollout of Amazon's AI taking over. So, and then I saw a post from Vanessa, you guys, on LinkedIn, how flat files, which used to be like our key to everything, Vanessa has taught us in the past, it's one of my most popular YouTube videos, how to do flat files on Amazon because it's the key to everything. And now they change flat files too. So Vanessa, thank you for being here. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and what we're going to talk about today? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, as Amy mentioned, I guess I'm, a, I'm an Amazon problem solver. So I've been doing this for a long time, almost seven years now. And it's just a bunch of, you know, things that Amazon throw at us and having a deep understanding on how the system works and what are the motivations beside, be, behind the changes they make. So we can troubleshoot fast. So my, my whole um, business, or, you know, I have an agency called Online Seller Solutions, we basically make sure that your listings, your offers to your accounts stay active because Amazon, we know it's constantly trying to deactivate or change or move things around to make them make them not the way we want them to be or make them less than they're supposed to be. So a lot of it has come from the experience of working with a lot of accounts in multiple categories, hundreds and hundreds of SKUs and categories and flat files and cases. So with that, now I lead a team that, you know, specializes on problem solving. And my latest kind of uh, stage of my lab, because I sometimes I call myself, I get into a uh, math scientist uh, type of mode where I'm just like looking into an account, trying to test things like uploading, downloading, like changing things, clicking here to see what breaks and how can I break it and how can I fix it so I can learn the system. And that's something that once you start understanding Amazon really well, you will notice that you cannot stay the same for long because either like if you're not testing something new and if you're not changing or if you are sitting down right now and saying like, oh, I haven't touched the back end of my listings for six months, then eventually you will encounter a problem. So it's just a matter of time. Like Amazon will do it for you, will break it for you. So my advice is always like stay ahead. And, and that's why I keep doing with the content and, and all of the things we post is like, hey guys, like look what's happening and expect some changes because the, the saddest thing for me is seeing sellers that are surprised by this AI change, like your friend Alfonso, this is not you. Actually, Amazon sent an email letting them know that if they don't approve or deny this change, they will change them automatically. So, you know, it's a lot of it. And I understand as a business owner, well, you're still trying to is, do Vanessa, what we found out though, is that he did get that email. And, and not just him, but hundreds of others across the seller forms, they got the email, they went in and declined the changes because the changes were terrible, right? And the changes still were pushed. So mm. there's some glitch that's going on that now some people, you're right, they weren't checking their email, they weren't paying attention and it just happened, you know, and their changes were automatically accepted. 
But in this case, and in many other cases, people got the email, they went in, I got the email as well. I went in, I looked at the changes and I was like, what is this? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even describe my product. Now we have people with the wrong colors in their, in their title, yeah. like all kinds of stuff is happening. So in some cases, right, Amazon has said it's coming, but then we follow the rules and it's still, you know, they have glitches. Right. I think sometimes yeah. they don't even like the AI itself gets a little bit out of control. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the system itself and Amazon itself as a as a massive infrastructure and technology algorithm, we already know that the left hand doesn't talk to the right hand and and a bunch of things are broken. And my, a lot of what uh, the things that I'm going to show you right now. And the reason why we, I told you, let, let's do a webinar, it's because we are in the transition point. We are still not in the AI, fully AI era of Seller Central. We are just not and prepared to be way more aggressive than what we're seeing right now. So this transition era is kind of awkward. Why? Because we still don't have the SOPs. We still don't have the processes. We still don't really know what Amazon will say or do, uh, definitely. So... Uh, you know, we are in a reactive state of like, you know, catching the balls that Amazon is showing at us just in case of nothing breaks. Uh, uh, but but I still think it's important because if we take a passive role, then I don't know, in six months, this will be so overwhelming that, you know, it will be impossible to catch up. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and show you guys a little bit of it. Um, again, this is based on experimentation. A lot of what I do as a scientist in Cellular Central, testing things out and seeing patterns because, you know, I'm, I'm devoted to backend and I love seeing the things that Amazon changes. So I came up with a theory. So the theory, I call it out with the all and in with the new. And this is what I'm going to be showing you. And right now we're in the transition point. We are still not completely out of the with the all and still not completely in with the new. So this is kind of awkward and that's why you're seeing a lot of things breaking. So the all model, what we used to know and learn from a bunch of courses, people like online and the way it used to work, right? Is that we sell keywords. And we've you heard that many, many, many times before. You don't really sell the product, you sell the keyword because people on Amazon are looking for keywords. Right. And that was the catalog formula. How do you build your product? Well, you basically find all of the keywords that are relevant to your specific product and create keyword enhanced copy. Right. So you a bunch of, of the keywords on your title. It's important because now you're going to be shown to the customer that is typing those in the search. bar. Then also we have the back end search terms and that's, you know, my specialty with flood files and all of the keywords in the back end that you can put in. So the system, Amazon system, Amazon algorithms, the A9 can know what your product is about. And on top of your copy, on top, on top of your front end information, they will take that and, you know, assess your product and say like, okay, uh, you know, Amy is selling a black tumbler instead of a green tumbler. It's different. Why? Because in the back end, we have the color black rather than green. Things like that, right? Those are not necessarily visible to the customer sometimes. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. But that's how the algorithm used to understand products, right? Based on your front-end keywords and your back-end keywords. And they weighted those data points on saying, like, this is important and this is not important. Um, and that's the reason why you know, there is a lot of content also of people talking about you only index up to your first hundred car uh, thousand characters on your bullet points or, you know, your search terms are worth this or that much and a copy and your description is this or that. That's where it came from. OK. And then we have nice images. And the reason why I put nice images here with a question mark is because technically, if you think about the old version, there are many, many successful products on Amazon that don't have amazing images. And, you know, examples, there are thousands and thousands. Um, and the system at, at one point started, but not really well, to understand images. 
But the reason why they understand images is because they were taking the information, the keywords again, on the images to see what you were saying. Because at some point you could put in your, you know, in your main picture, you could put that you had a hypoallergenic pillow or antimicrobial pillow, but then they plug in in the system to understand images. And now every time you mention antimicrobial or, you know, hypoallergenic without the pesticide um, certification, then you couldn't sell it. So we know that the algorithm at some point start understanding images. And those are the things you needed, right? Keywords in the back end, keywords in the images, somewhat. And that's how you sell to the system first, because that's the other part. If you understand that you need to sell to the AI, A9 first, um, to, to that algorithm, then the system can put you up on the search results uh, for you know your customers looking for your specific keywords. That's over. And we are we are in the transition point of that model, it's over. And it is some things are good that they're like, you know, not longer with us anymore, will not be anymore with us. And some other ones that will make us change the game uh, of catalog and especially launches and new products getting into the catalog. So the new model, I call it um, sell to AI, right? So if we understand AI, AI is a technology that has the logic to understand data in levels that are contextual. So they understand more than just the keyword that you're saying. They're understanding that a black tumbler is not only something that you drink water with, but it's something that you take to the beach or it's something that you take to a mountain or it's something that is in, in your car so you don't spill the water, things like that. There, there is con contextual understanding of the product. So when you sell to AI, a lot of the SEO and front-end copy goes beyond having the keywords, right? Because at some point, you won't need to put in your title, this is the perfect Tumblr for your, to go to the beach, for example, um, because the system, the AI will understand based on the contextual of your product that effectively, this is an accessory that is, you know, appropriate to go to the beach because it keeps your water or your drinks cooler, right? Or or cold. So that's where this is be this becomes really interesting, but really messy at the same time. Why? Because we need to, based on the SEO that we have, we need to sell to the AI. And the problem with the AI is that it is a perception. It is it, it's still not very logical. Right or or what it could mean something for somebody is not the exact same thing as somebody else, and we can take that same assumption for AI. The way the system one system understand your you know your input is not the same as you understand other one. Similar thing with let's say that you put the exact same prompt on ChatGPT or Bart, the exact same one you're gonna get different results because they're trained in data points that are completely different. So. You understand that now they're taking context out of your copy, bigger, deeper than just your keywords. Then there will be a lot of human and AI optimized images. And this is really important because AI images have the power of, um, I guess, and you know this really well, Amy, the way they explain things or the way the data is put out on an image by an AI, it's sometimes different from the human input, and there is a lot of context and a lot of um, subliminal, you know, messages that you put on an image. So you need to be really clever. AI, I think, is still not there. That's why we need to have kind of this, um, uh, you know, mix and hybrid model of saying like, yeah, use AI, leverage AI to make your images, but at the same time have that input because let's say that you're selling this Tumblr for the beach, you're gonna put a somebody let's say a girl in the beach with the tumbler and that that's happy so now the system understand that this is a, an appropriate accessory for the beach versus let's say having the exact same tumbler in a car then the understanding will be like this is for somebody that looks perfect tumbler to fit my nissan whatever whatever 
you know, car, right? So those are the things that you take out of the, the AI is now taking out of more than just what they did before of saying like, oh, let me understand if they have keywords in the images that could trigger them to, to shut them down. This is like, let me understand their images so I can know what the product is. And I and think this, I, I think a good example is ChatGPT right now, how you can now upload an image, right? The other day I was having a conversation with ChatGPT and I said, you know, I want to make some changes to a product. There's a competitor product. I'm going to feed you reviews. I'm going to feed you data about that product. And then I'm going to give you an image of it so that you can analyze it. And then you can help me make the changes that I want to make and suggest those changes. And I think it's so interesting what you're describing here, because, you know, sure enough, ChatGPT said, okay, well, feed me those reviews, feed me this data. And then it said, all right, go ahead and, and uh, upload the image and I will analyze the image. And it did such a good job of understanding as long as it had the context, right? And that's the, the hard part is, you know, Amazon has millions of products and they've worked very hard on their AI. And now that AI can go in and read a listing and view the images and have that context, even, you know, A plus content, all of that, have that context of what it is and make, those changes to the SEO um, and make those changes to make the search engine even better, just like what Google do is doing with their search engine, right? Where you can type something in and now you can see all these suggestions and summaries from across the web. So I think it's really cool. And I think it's so awesome the way that you put this, that selling to AI, because that's exactly where we're going. And it's going to be an interesting way to see it all roll out, how Amazon's own AI will read our listings and view our images and make those updates to the search engine. Yeah, and the key to what you said is the AI that Amazon built. So the AI that Amazon built and it's integrating right now with Seller Central, it is not the same as ChatGPT. It's not the same as Mark. It's not the same as Mid Journey. So we need to understand, and I have some, uh, some you know, frameworks that I'm using to just test things. The last thing that I'll say about the formula that we can control is the enhanced traffic. So I read at least eight or nine papers on AI. If you go to Amazon.science, that's kind of the scientific publisher where they put out what are the technologies that they're working on. Everything in 2023 was basically AI, like 90% of it was basically AI. So um, uh, one of the things that they mentioned in, in one of the papers was the interactions with the customer and the content on a listing will give the AI a lot of feedback. So we control the copy. We control the images, we control the context. But if somebody that is looking for a like a Tumblr for the beach and goes to your listing and navigate to something and then they leave or they add it to the car, that is giving more data points to the system, to the AI to say, like, this is a good product. And and I want to I will mention also that we are. And I understand we're focused on the seller and selling side uh, because we're sellers, obviously. But I am predicting that for 2022, for 2024, um, Amazon will release like an AI personal shopper within their their app. Where right now, instead of you typing best uh, like Tumblr for the beach, you will say best Tumblr. And, and the algorithm based on your likes and based on your personality or based on your uh, interactions prior or your even your prior orders, the AI will make an assumption of being like a personal shopper of saying like, this is the Tumblr that you want. So this is where it gets really interesting on the on the next level. So, okay, I, I, I kind of like jumping through the hoops, but... Um, AI, the, the AI generated listings, this is something that we have early access when you create new listings on Seller Central, where you put a prompt and Amazon is giving you, uh, you know, the, the information of, of your listing. And that's the automated thing that they're doing. 
the cool thing here, and I don't know why this looks so blurry. I'm sorry. Um, one thing that I did was foreign recognition. So this is this is this was my hypothesis. If every AI system is built based on a logic that is that's coming from data points that they already have, because Amazon already knows what works or what doesn't, what um what customers like or don't like. So if if we imply that they understand that data and they build their AI based on that data, then the output that the, the AI is giving has patterns of what it's prioritized by the system. And why I'm saying this is because I went ahead and with the a, like AI generating thing, I started putting prompts in multiple categories. And what I realized was that the structure that they put the content out is a specific per category and product type. So the example that I have here is a, 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 a sheet for you know a size queen bed. So the features in the bullet points, and this was the interesting part, the bullet points were, okay, the first bullet point was always, always, always about um, the material and the fabric. And they were explaining with very rich keywords like moisture, uh, breathable softness. I'm sorry if you don't read it, but I'm kind of trying to read what's there. The, the, it's, it's blurry. Um, so they, they put these things and then they put the size after and then the style and then how it's the how it's easy to do you know machine wash and then what, how this is superior quality from everything else that you're seeing in the market. So I did this probably a hundred times with multiple prompts in same categories with different uh, or in same and different categories and prototypes. And I realized that it's the exact same pattern specific to the prototype. So I went ahead to go to the accessories and, and I went to electronics and then accessories. And the bullet points and the copy and accessories in, in the electronic was like one line only like one little line as a bullet point. Look at here in home and kitchen, which is where the bedding uh, subcategory is. They're very long, very like uh, keyword rich and uh, adjective and things like that that are more for the people that are looking to experience something. But in the electronic uh, example, I was just seeing maybe a bullet point of top like 20 words, no more than 20 words, that's it. And it followed the exact same pattern. First, there was the material and the country of origin, and then other features and other things. Again, I was testing this with no product in mind. I was just like uh, putting something that didn't exist. The other part of it was the level of hallucination that it had, because I just said in the electronic, I just said a backpack. I said like, this is a backpack for a 15 inch laptop. I didn't say anything else. And the AI assumed that it was black. The AI assumed that it was made uh, uh, from polyester that was uh, coming from China. And you know a bunch of things that I didn't mention, I didn't say, it, but the AI thought it was important to put it there. So, so now you're saying like, okay, this has a pattern. So what's my recommendation here right now that now that I understand this framework, you go ahead in your specific subcategory or prototype and see what's the pattern that Amazon says or, or the AI is saying that your product should be built based upon. Like, uh, is it this type of information? And the reason why, and I'm just uh, looking for a good reason for this, is that Amazon is building this based on something that works because they have the data points. And that's just an assumption. Maybe maybe my assumption is wrong and it was some external team that built the AI, but I don't think they built something without the data that they already have of things that already work. So, you know, maybe looking into that. At the end of the day, you are the owner of the approval or rejection of the content and you can keep generating content and generating content, generating content, and you will see the pattern and the structure. It is the exact same. The words change, of course, but the, the, the way they lay out the bullet points, same thing. 
for all of the categories. And when you start comparing like tools, um, uh, instruments, tools and instruments, I don't remember the category, like, you know, drills. So that one was similar to electronics, but accessories and beauty was similar to home and kitchen. So those are the things that you need to take in consideration to start playing. I'm not saying that you should use this content and this is the only thing that will work. Remember, we're still in a transition phase. We still don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I, I prefer to be ahead of the curve saying like, this is the pattern or this is the framework that Amazon is using to create listings within my prototype. Now I'm going to start using that blueprint. And you do whatever you want. Like you could do it yourself. And you could do AI, chat GPT, or higher nature. Hopefully Amazon won't change your list if you go with the pattern that they're already recommending. Because you remember back in the day, and I guess still now, if um, you're trying to make changes to a listing, Amazon still has to go over it and approve it. And a lot of times people will try to change their title, for example, and they won't be able to change it from the original title that they had um, after they change it because Amazon says, oh, it's not within our style guidelines, right? And you need to do this and you need to remove this. And people were like, no, I had a perfect title. So the thing is, what I'm concerned about with this, with this massive kind of AI takeover of all the listings, is that you're removing competitive edge. If you are selling queen size bamboo sheets, for example, and all of us are going to be forced to use the AI of our listings, what happens? Like we're going to have to rely on external traffic and brand building because on Amazon, it's going to be vanilla. And how are you going to be able to tell the difference between this bamboo sheet and that bamboo sheet, except for the brand name, if Amazon's going to force changes? And then if you actually make the changes to your listings according to Amazon's suggested pattern, like Vanessa is showing you here, um, then hopefully you'll be able to keep your changes and they won't be overwritten. Yeah. Um, and that's the interesting part. So I went to Amazon Accelerate in September and I and I went into this session specifically and I was talking to some, you know, Amazon people and they are seeing AI as one thing that will help to even out the playing field of saying like, oh, well, but a lot of the concerns it are like, you know, there are listings that are so old that have so many reviews that have so much ranking that little people coming in cannot compete. So, but this is what you said is key. It's like, oh, now you need to rely on outside traffic and more traffic and more PPC. Well, if you think about it, Amy, that's exactly what Amazon wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Like, in, in all honesty, like, let's be realistic. They want you to spend more money. And they're not they're not making the system simpler or better or easier to launch without you paying the cut. So it will be, it will be irresponsible to say that that's not something that could potentially happen. And, and that you shouldn't be looking at PPC and all of those costs and, and getting clever about it. Because from, from this perspective and this change, that is basically what's going to happen. Especially if they add to their platform, they, they add that uh, personalized like shopping expert and the AI will sh kind of shop for you and prioritize things. Pretty much how... Uh, algorithms like Instagram and TikTok work like right now, you know, I only see content that I want to see. So imagine if Amazon takes that same principle and use AI to say like, we're, we're only going to show you products that we think you want to see. So it, mm -hmm. it's getting scary. It's getting and scary. The thing is, you know, we have said that it's very important to pick or to your product choice is super important and how you design and develop your product is super important because now if you are selling a queen size sheet, you're going to be super vanilla. It's going to be very hard for Amazon with my product, for example, it's the only one of its kind and it's highly yeah. rated. So it's like, okay, well, it's really hard for them to put vanilla content over my listing because it's, not the same. It's not, you know, and it kind of scares me that they might do that. And then, you know, it'll cause me even more issues. 
But um, but product choice is going to be so important because otherwise all you're going to have is PPC. You're going to have to pay for that top of search. It's going to be crazy. Correct. Yeah. And I saw to, uh, today the other day, I don't remember, uh, on LinkedIn, John Durkins was, uh, I think uh, he mentioned you, the an opinion of saying Amazon have always uh, put the face or his position was to be a platform where the sellers put the content. Therefore, they're not responsible for the content. But with AI and, and adding AI or forcing the AI that they are saying, they become the publisher. Uh, and, and with that comes a lot of liability. So I still think that we're going to be in a mixed situation where we're going to still have control of the content. The thing that I'm not really sure is that if we're going to have control over how the AI reads our content. And that's why I think it's so important for us to start understanding the patterns of the system, because we cannot come up with a human mind and putting content that is that is analyzed by a human mind for a machine that is reading content in a specific format. Even though your human content, even though you copy, it is optimized for conversion or to speak to a real shopper, or a real customer. Yet the first person that you're selling or the first thing that you're selling to is the algorithm. If the algorithm doesn't understand your context, then you're screwed, Yeah. right? Um, yeah. So that's why leveraging those tools that are already in Seller Central are important. It doesn't necessarily, it's to say that you should use it. Some things are bad. Some other ones are great. Like for example, this AI generated image. You know what it means for a brand that didn't have the budget before of now having an AI generative image for their ads within Seller Central, where just with one hero image, like white background, they're able to advertise things like this. You will say like, yeah, it's kind of look fake. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, this is an interesting image. Like this is better than having nothing, right? This is better for a brand that doesn't have the budget to do any kind of shooting or, you know, photo shoot to have something. So there are opportunities. I think there's still like light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I'm excited. I'm more excited than I'm afraid. I think if people are afraid, and, and I'll see a lot of people complaining, especially with the change of class and things like that, you either complain or you learn how to use it and use it on your... There is still a possibility uh, for for that, right? right. Um, oh, well, this is the example of, you know, the change how that went out right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um and then okay what's the future so i mentioned the the transition point that's where you sell to ai i think the future i call it perception perception is reality so how the system will perceive your product will be the reality of what your product is and that's where it gets messy, right? So that's where the, 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 the content needs to be AI enhanced. So yes, obviously the, the, they want to build AI that is as close as how a customer will convert better. But your primary goal is to make sure the AI understand really well what your product is about. And I have an example for this. So I have in my community, one of the, the boot campers that went through the the course that I did she sells greeting cards you know that thing that you give for somebody for their birthday in the greeting card she had a red car uh you know a toy car it was like a, a greeting card for a boy you know a birthday gift like super cute whatever um <laughs> the algorithm said like change her category for this specific greeting card to toys and games under some little car, something like collectible cars or something like that. And it was so funny to see that that change was made like in the middle of like the holiday season, I think it was around Thanksgiving. And it was changed and she would try to change it. And, and in seller support, they were saying like the system, this is a crazy part. They're saying the system, it's reading your main image they don't, it's kind of like the system doesn't see the greeting card. They only see the red car. That's why you're now in toys and games. So this is where perception is reality. If the system is perceiving that you are something else, 
now you're getting screwed by things like being in the wrong category. And this is really detrimental because, I mean, for that, maybe maybe not that bad because at the end of the day, it's still in toys and games and it's kind of something that you will look for a birthday gift or something like that. But there are some other examples where it was awful that changed that. Yeah, I, when I posted about Amazon automatically changing titles, whether people accepted the AI email or not, um, people came through and said that their categories were automatically changed and it was just overnight and it didn't make any sense. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. That's such an interesting observation of the red car on the greeting card. And now, you know, your, your toys and games. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, Crazy. And, and even sometimes, so I have another example that is not as obvious, uh, but or, or yeah, it's not as subtle, but uh, then AI optimized images, that's one thing that you will need to be very careful. So there is not a lot about, uh, because AI is better, but it's a lot of, about the data points that are in an AI generated image, right? Um, so this is where I believe in the future, 99% of our images will come from AI. Will, there will be some components. Obviously, you need to take the picture of your real product and maybe integrate it with AI, but um, most of it will come from optimized AI images because AI talks to AI. A- apparently, right now, we're still not... Like, AI doesn't talk human, like, language. So AI talks AI it still doesn't really understand really well human. So until we get to the technology to that point, um, the the way the AI perceive image generated, uh, you know, uh, yeah, AI, so sorry, human generated images, then it it kind of conflict. And I think the enhanced traffic will keep being there. Like, I don't see that going, going anywhere so doing you know driving traffic to amazon doing a lot of ppc and kind of controlling the narrative there will be important because that that's the data that amazon will get to you know consume and say like oh yeah this pro is interesting for this specific keyword let me add it to the context of understanding what the product is about and you know so you know on ppc you could control some keywords with outside traffic you can even control more context uh some you know brand awareness and things like that so i think it's really interesting that ppc like for example exact match isn't performing like exact match anymore on amazon So, you know, everything is changing. So keywords are not keywords like we thought they were anymore. Um, And that those changes have already happened. So it's like, you know, we really do have to make sure that it's Amazon is no longer set it and forget it. It used to be, you know, we follow this launch formula. We drive a little bit of traffic on Amazon, maybe off Amazon, you know, and we just set it and forget it. And we watch the sales go, right? Maybe we do some giveaways, whatever. Well, now everything is different. Like we really have to pay attention to the attributes that we're filling out in our, and I know you're probably going to talk about that. Uh, We have to pay attention to the data that's going to Amazon, how customers are perceiving our products so that when they go back and talk about it in reviews and all of that, um, and or in questions and answers, the way they search for it, all of that data is able, because of AI, all of that data from around the internet is able to be summarized and utilized like never before. And so it's really, really important that we pay attention to the full customer journey around our products, because otherwise, if there's confusion there, it's going to even cause a a worse problem with the AI summarization and um, understanding of that product. Totally. And and to what you said, Amy, this is the perfect example. And I did this with AI. It's like, this is what you put, this is your input to the listing. This is what you think your listing looks like. And you're like, this is perfect. This is beautiful. AI sees this. AI (laughs) sees the consumer behavior, the back end, your images, the understanding, the context, uh, you know, everything else that will, they will add. So it's not the little picture. This is, yeah, you can do so much. 
to make it beautiful. But this is, you know, art also then if you think about the possibilities, and again, we're talking about this is the potential uh, scenario. It's, it doesn't mean that it will happen, but if you're aware that it's possible to, to happen, then you could be prepared. Is that imagine when they put in also, they weight your competitors in the equation. It's like, is this better than this one? Well, this is good for women and this for men. You know, those things. And, and there it's a whole forest of possibilities that we still don't know how we can control. Um, and in some scenarios, we will not be able to control. So, you know, uh, or, or they will make a space to control that, which is even more scary, right? Like, or, or it will throw off a bunch of people. Um, on the categorization issues, this is what I took out from an AI paper, uh, Amazon Dab Science. Um, so it says that AI enhanced algorithm is trying to understand, and this is these are my quotes, like understand what pros are based on key influencing factors to build various influence scores. So to identify important subset of data. So already they're saying what they're doing. They are taking the data, different key influencing factors, like whether it's your images, whether it's your title, whether they click on your second image or not, whether they add to car, whether they see your A plus content, they read your story, like all of these data points to put influence scores. So that's something that they still haven't released is what are the influence scores and what's the priority? Like maybe for AI, the priority will be the title and or not, or maybe it will be the A plus content. We still don't know to identify that the, the those uh, points and saying like this product is relevant or not for that search. Uh, so I still think that there is a lot of opportunities for smaller people and people that are, uh, savvy enough and, and curious enough to you know ride this wave because the ones that take time or they're reactive at adding um, AI to their you know formula, they will be a little bit lost. And this is an example that I have on modification of content. Um, they share this on a, on a Slack channel. Uh, and if you see the yellow, the ones that are circling yellow, See the title here. This is the title that Amazon AI put for these specific necklaces. But when you click on the listing, the title, their old title still remain. Mm. So when I saw that, what, what took me to, to the point was saying, okay, maybe we'll see a model where it's hybrid, where Amazon will be the owner of the search results, but you will be the owner of your product detail page. So I see that that's a possibility too, where because of they already have the context, because they already understand your product, because all of these data points and influencing factors will score into your uh, ranking and indexation, the system will know where to put you. Then when you go to a listing, it is your job, your job to convert based on, you know, whatever other type of title or ways to put it there. So I think this makes a lot of sense. In my mind, it makes a lot of sense that they will get leave that ownership to the seller. Um, I still don't know. This, this person that posted this, I think he was trying to fix the change and, and effectively he did. But um, these are the things that Amazon, you know, like push as a beta and then it rolls out as a mandatory type of situation. We're, we're not really in control. Um, and lastly, the last thing that I want to share, just because we're uh, wrapping up, um, rip to flat files 2023. I'm no. really sad about some things, like literally, no. but opportunities <laughs> in, in a lot of new ways. Take it back, uh, Vanessa, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, literally, the, the X delete feature was to me, like, uh, I took it personal. Personally, I'm like, wow, Amazon, wow. <laughs> um, the extra lead, uh, for the ones of you that don't know, is a feature within the inventory loader file in the column I. The column I used to have three options. A as add, update, D as delete, 
an X as what we call X delete or remove completely from the system. Basically the X delete what did is remove the content that the seller input to the listing. So it kind of refreshes the backend and then you could upload things. The new inventory loader file is this one. Um, in the record action, they only have two things, add product, which is, okay, add, we already had it. And the other option, which is so funny is ignore like it is not delete it is not x it is not a, it's ignore and i was like what the f you know what is ignore what does even ignore mean and the, in the data definitions they don't have that yet so i i still don't know what ignore means when i use so it x delete is gone and it's, it's been gone replaced in by ignore yeah and and they don't know what they don't they don't say what ignore is um I can let me let me open it for you so you can see it. Uh so here you see the flat file? Yeah. Okay, so here in the record action, look, add a product or ignore. Maybe it means the line is ignored, right? Because in Excel. Yeah, I mean uh, so that's the thing. Ignore doesn't delete anything is your it's just ignoring any change to that product which it's like it's ridiculous to me because if i want to ignore something i just don't put it in my flat file and i yeah, just delete that wrong that doesn't ridiculous. make any sense it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make uh, it's absolutely useless um <laughs> And the other three, the first three ones are for reference. Like you don't fill out these things. You start filling out from D forward. Uh, so that's the other part of like you put Amazon title. I don't know. I'm still testing to see if this uh, inventory loader oh. file, this will change the title. I still don't, I, uh, it haven't changed. So you see- Why the would they file. even put in Amazon's title there? Yeah. Exactly. Are they going to become owners of all of our listings? That's a that's the thing where, like in my mind, like a few days ago, that was a possible path. But with what John said, like on his LinkedIn post about if Amazon does that, they become the publisher. And in, in previous lawsuits, they were able to win because they were not the publisher. They were the platform mm -hmm. because who controls, who has the liability and the control for the content is the seller. So it will be very interesting to see if they make a move to being the publisher because with the FTC behind them and you know trying to break them apart, basically, this is not a smart move. In my opinion, I don't know. Maybe there is something that I'm not seeing in this full picture, but wow. it doesn't seem like a good move for well, them. Why would they even it. call it that then? Amazon's title. Maybe it's Amazon's suggested title. I don't know. But where would that even be populated? Yeah, exactly. That's what I don't understand. Let me see if I can open. Yeah, it's Amazon title. Wow. Um, and and the 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 four row, which is the row that we use to communicate with the system, and and this is the row that matters. Like none of the things above matter. The this row is the one that's more most important. This structure completely changed. So if you see back to my presentation, you see that for example, product dash ID type mm -hmm. um, in the new model is uh, completely different. So it's contribution underscore skew hashtag one that value uh that means so for my my math scientist type of hat uh this means that the back end itself the way amazon it's it code the title it is it changed completely because this to me is let's say that they were coding the back end of seller central they were coding with javascript I'm just saying an example. This is not this is not necessarily true. Or JSON code, we know that they use JSON code to for the catalog, so they change from JSON to I don't know CC plus plus something like that. Therefore, the taxonomy, the conventions for for attributes are different, and I am expecting that this what I'm saying this, the attribute naming convention will be the thing that will break apart the most things of the catalog. Why? Because sometimes 
let's say that I'm contributing to one skew here, and this is the 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 skew, but then in the old thing, they used to call it product ID dash type or, or product ID, sorry, product ID, then I don't have, uh, like there is no uh, one, one relationship. They, they're not even named the same thing. So things will break. And, and I expect these months coming to be very interesting for the catalog and, and many, many things breaking. And again, like, we are in a transition. literally just like glazed over looking at this. Like I, I can't even imagine where your brain is going because you're yeah. a total catalog nerd. So I can't, I, but I can't even, what does this even mean? It's so jacked. It's yeah, so it's, completely it's, different from what we're used to. And the mm -hmm. naming conventions that they chose. Very interesting. Very interesting. And it, it gets even like deeper and uh, like, you know, uh, exciting, I guess, for me. I don't know. Um, the, the category listing report, I'm trying to um when you say it gets exciting for you that makes me <laughs> uh here it is um so this one I'm, I'm i'm trying to look for the file too because this is kind of blurry but um what is interesting in the in the category specific files is that now we have the item like the taxonomy it's it it remains very similar, but the interesting thing here is that now we have like a marketplace ID and language ID. Mm. So what is interesting here, my, my pray, honestly, is that we will be able to control secondary languages translations based on this. So uh, it is still not happening. I push something to see if it changed and it's not changing anything. Uh, where I change. So the marketplace, this marketplace, the marketplace ID, this is the US. And then in language, instead of English, I put Spanish to see if I could change something and it didn't went through, it, it came back with an error. Uh, mm -hmm. But but I don't know, maybe they open finally those things and that will become, the, that that is, that's going to be a gift, to be honest. That's going to be like, oh, Amazon, thank you for giving us something after this change. Yeah, um, because we always had to like do kind of workarounds for Spanish language and stuff like that. And, you know, the most yeah. spoken languages. Um, and I think yeah. the, the, the world is changing in terms of languages and with AI, you know, uh, there it's going to really change the way we all communicate because we're going to be able to communicate so much easier in many different languages. Um, so yeah. it's, it's really going to open the world up and I can see, you know, even Amazon US becoming much more um, fluid when it comes to languages. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the new template here. Mm. So this is, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. And, and there's, they're kind of scary because they're way longer. So look how interesting the naming for external, external product ID, external, externally assigned product identifier. This means product ID. Well, we used to say product ID, mm -hmm. uh, what it, it, what it was like the UPC, uh, EIN, ISBN, because we also have a column now for ASINs. So wow. okay. we have both the UPC and the ASIN. Um, so yeah. And that's interesting because it says suggested ASIN. And yeah. then, you know, over on the other side where it said Amazon's title, it didn't say Amazon's suggested title. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 interesting. It's very interesting. I am I I am. So when is yeah. the boot camp for the new flat files coming out? Because I'm gonna well, have no, to take it. No, seriously, I am doing it. I'm starting on the twenty fifth. So no, twenty third. So this month on the twenty third, I'm not gonna do a boot camp. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna do what I did at one point in the past, which there was the ABC week. I'm gonna do a week. I'm gonna do three sessions where we're gonna go over this 
uh, kind of life because there are some people that still don't see these changes on their product type and I'm still testing a lot of things. So um, it's going to be way smaller, less structure uh, in a sense that, you know, a bunch of lessons. These are all of the things that I'm seeing. How can you use it? How can you start playing with it without uh, being implemented in your account yet? Because some accounts still don't see the beta. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be, I'm going to put up the post today or later today or tomorrow uh, for you to register. Um, so yeah, if you, if you want to do it, there are going to be three sessions uh, one hour plus Q and A, so we can go over all of the questions and potentially, you know, problem solve some things. I think the problems that we're facing today, like in this month, were will be completely different from the ones six months apart. But if you understand the structure first, now you're way better ahead than the guy that will react to a change and will be like, oh, what the fuck? I don't even know where my master file is and I lost everything. Because also right. it's the transition right. from the old category listing report to the new category listing report will be painful for some for some people because they don't, you know, you know, they don't understand how the data is it match <laughs> matches. And so what we're looking at now, Vanessa, has this actually pushed out to everyone yet? Or is this just something that you're able to view? Yeah, no, it's not uh, out for everybody. I have it here. So when you go, okay, this is a flow. You go to Seller Central, you go to download a spreadsheet and you will see all of these options. Then you click in this one, list pros that are not currently on Amazon catalog. So you download the spreadsheet, you should see this. You should see this pop-up window saying like, oh, we changed the feature, blah, blah, blah. We added AI, actually, they say here. We added some enhanced search engine. <laughs> it's funny. So if you don't see this beta like pop-up window when you try to download a file here, then you are not going to see changes on your flat files. Uh, but it's just a matter of time. What I haven't tested, though, and I, I guess I after this call, I should go and, and test it out, is what happens if I use a new file and put it in an account that has that still doesn't have the beta? I wonder if the system will reject it or if it's just that you cannot download it. So mm -hmm. this is how you download it, how the flow looks like now. And I'm sorry that this is blurry. This is so frustrating. Um, so it's like you put here the keyword for your product and then something will like some suggestions will come up and then you can view all of the item type keywords. So you have the list of all of the item type keywords that you're looking for. You can select them all or unselect them, which is something that I've been talking about since forever for flat files where I call it at some point, I call it um, borrowing sibling categories attributes so everything under the same type of product you could borrow it now amazon is doing it automatically for you which is very interesting uh, they really want you to invest in the back end and all of the attributes that are behind so after you select the ones you want you download your thing or go to the browse tree note the browse tree guide that's still there uh, you click on it download it because right now this beta is only for the us.com amazon.com you need to unselect all of the other marketplaces and this will this window will show up saying like new beta option you can opt in or out like you could select not to download the beta file i just think it, it will be silly for you not to take advantage of it because if if the system change that much in the back end where the fourth row it's now way different from what we used to see before um i don't see there is a way back i don't see how they're gonna kill this because this means to me this means that the whole back end already changed yeah. the whole infrastructure already changed so it's just a matter of time and i just looked on my seller central and sure enough i have the uh <laughs> the old beta pop-up. So thank you, Amazon. <laughs> I guess we're going to have some fun. <laughs> yeah. So you see it? You see yeah. the beta pop-up? Nice. Yeah. So you're going to have some fun. So I'm going to play around with it. We'll see what happens, you know, see what I can break. <laughs> yes. Well, Perfect. Vanessa, what, I guess before we wrap it up today, 
what is your one piece of advice? You know, we're hearing when Amazon is changing these things, sometimes with our permission, sometimes without our permission, um, and we want to change them back. And what we're hearing across the the web is that, you know, uh, there is no standard answer, right? There is no like, oh, I used a flat file and it worked. Or, oh, I contacted seller support. Or I asked to be the, um, what was it? The leading contributor. And Amazon, you know, I think because every time you call, you get a different person or, you know, and it's yeah. it's kind of, you know, choose your own adventure <laughs> thing. Yep. But um, what is your one piece of advice for problem solving for some of these new changes that are coming? Whoa, all of a sudden my my listing changed. What should people be thinking about doing? Yeah, so the first thing is that don't be afraid of the change. Like it will happen. We're just going to be better at understanding it and, and change faster than Amazon, right? Like as entrepreneurs, we are resilient. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. And since this is so new, and I know for, for a fact that Amazon doesn't even have the SOPs in the back end to fix these issues that they're creating themselves, because again, left hand doesn't talk to right hand and vice versa. Um, don't settle for an answer that you don't like at the at the beginning. So if you call and say like, hey, you changed my title, what's happening? And they tell you like, oh, well, that's a new norm. You're going to have that forever. Uh, don't settle for that because they don't even know because they are not reading SOPs. Because if they were, they will be telling you like, oh, this is a new policy and they will be sharing with you kind of an update or something more uh, formal because they couldn't change these things out of the blue without us giving us at least guidance. So um, I think cases is are the way to go. I still haven't found uh, a case where we just with a uh, flat file and an, an update, that was enough for us for us to change AI enhanced content or, you know, to change the category, especially. And that's a, a, a question that I get all the time. It's like, Amazon changed my category. What the fuck? Like, how can I fix it? Give me a flat file, give me the special formula. And, and unfortunately with flat files that cannot be changed. So it's a lot of cases. Um, you know, there are some times that you will be lucky and some other ones that you will take, I don't know, three, four cases to do it. Um, patience. Honestly, patience, knowing that it is possible to change it. I think that's the most important part. Now that you know that somebody else changed it, you are not going to settle for an answer of like, no, you cannot. Even they could say whatever, like you will keep escalating your case and escalating your case until that. Right now for us, um, chatting with seller support has been good. Like I'm a big proponent of calling just because I feel when I call, I'm, I'm in more control than emailing. But chat, you get the same type of like real time back to back, you know, interaction uh, and not a lot of the anxiety of being on the phone and kind of like if you get mad, you know, you get frustrated and you it that that, you know transfer in the in the tone of your voice or you know and on chatting it's less than that so you could you know facilitate a conversation especially send attachments and and proof of things super quick versus when you're on the phone and the thing here is that when you chat the content or the chatting or the case uh history remains there when you call you don't really know like there is no uh, text or feedback of what was said on the call. So if somebody said something and then you don't, you know, it's not recording the case, you cannot use it for your advantage in other cases. So that's why I like chatting. Um, I think those are the things. Keep trying, keep fixing it. Uh, it is possible. A lot of cases. Uh, and if you ever encounter something that you think it is impossible, just let me know. I like impossible. I like to fix it. So just you know, send me a message on Facebook, LinkedIn, email Vanessa at onlinesellersolutions.com uh, or go to a website, whatever you want. I am up for impossible challenges. She's always good at reading my mind. My next question was going to be, hey, how can we get in touch with you? How can we follow you? So you guys, you can always leave a comment on this video because Vanessa is really good at following up on that stuff. And you can find Vanessa all over she's she's everywhere so you know 
<laughs> She's the Vanessa Hung. And Vanessa, thank you so much for being here today and for just an enlightening presentation. You really got my brain going about where we're going, not only with Amazon, but kind of e-commerce as a whole. And um, it's it's really interesting. You know, I love staying on top of this stuff as well. So uh, thank you for being here and for taking the time. And thank you everyone for listening and for tuning in. We know this is a long and in-depth conversation today, but this stuff is important. It's coming. We can't prevent it, right? It's coming and we've got to learn how to be resilient and how to deal with it. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa. We'll see you guys next time.